Okay, it's Mr. P.S. with Calculus Unit 4, Day 4, and we're going to do some FRQ practice. That means free response questions. We're practicing what we've learned about position, velocity, and acceleration. All right, first, a good warm-up here. We're given a graph, and we're being asked to find how many times does the particle change direction. Now, remember, we've talked about direction being the velocity is positive when it's moving right, and its velocity is negative when it's moving left. This is a velocity graph. Very important. Anytime it's above the x-axis, that means it's moving right. Anytime it's, the graph is below the x-axis, that means it's a negative velocity, so it's moving to the left. So it only switches directions anytime it switches from moving left to right or right to left. If it goes from moving right to moving right back again, meaning it went right and then it stood still and then went back to moving right, that is not changing, that is not changing directions. So it only changes directions three times. Here it goes from left to right. Here it goes from right to left. Here it goes from left to right. This goes from right to standing still instantaneously to going back to going right again. So it's only changing directions. And right here it goes from standing still to moving left because it goes into the negatives. So that is also not an answer either, either. There's one, two, three answers, and that is it. All right, only doing a couple of questions here. It says the depth of the river at certain points is modeled by the function W defined above, where W of T is measured in feet and T is measured in hours. Okay, find W prime of 8 using the correct units. Explain what the meaning of W prime of 8 means in the context of the question. Now, first thing we need to do is figure out which one is W of 8. W of 8 uses this piece. So everything in this first piece is completely useless. How do I know that? Because 8 is in between 6 and 10. So that's how I know. Had it been 6, then it would have used this piece, or anything less than 6. But we only focus here. So first thing I notice is that W of T at when, when uh, at uh, W of 8, when W equals 8, or X equals 8. So when T equals 8, sorry, when T equals 8, I have to look to see what letter to use. When T equals 8, at T equals 8, this is true, okay? So that's W of T when T equals 8. Then I'm going to differentiate using simple power rules. Find W prime of T. Yes, you should do that on the AP exam. You have to show all the steps. And then I simplified it. And then I'm going to find, well, what was the derivative at 8 by plugging 8 into this equation and solving. And it looks like W prime of 8 happens to be negative 4 fifths. So after 8 hours, the depth of the river is decreasing at a rate of 4 fifths per feet per hour. 4 fifths feet per hour. Sorry, 4 fifths feet per hour. It's decreasing. And the reason why it's decreasing is because it's a negative. And I've said in multiple videos, if you've been watching them all, that anytime this is negative and you're giving a context, don't ever put a negative here. They always expect you to write increasing or decreasing, not the positives or the negatives. All right, question number two. Okay, all right, that was the first one. Number three, a particle moves along the x-axis so its position at time t is greater than zero. Given by this equation, show that the velocity of the particle... Okay, so they like to give these questions quite a bit. They're giving you the answer, essentially. They're saying, hey, this is the velocity. Prove it. That's basically what they're saying. Now, when you look at the position formula, right away, I know you got some options. You could take this and move it to the top and then use sort of a chain rule slash product rule. I think that's going to be more work. I think you're just better off just using the quotient rule the way it is. Just use the quotient rule, which is low times the derivative of the top minus top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared and then just go through the process to prove that that yes was the right answer because these two cancel out these two add up to 70 yeah that's the right answer is the particle moving to the origin okay i like this question personally it makes me think now let's think this through how do i know if the particle is moving towards the origin i know what you're thinking oh that just means it must be moving right or must be moving left well not necessarily think of this as on a timeline if you're over here, if this is zero, if you're over here and you're moving right, then you're moving away from the origin. If you're over here and moving right, then you're actually moving towards the origin. So we actually need to find two things. We need to figure out which side of the origin did we start on, and then we need to ask ourselves, which direction are we moving? Because if we start on the right side and we're moving left, then we're moving towards the origin. If we're moving right, we're moving away from the origin. So two things we need to know here. The first thing I'm going to do is find my position. The way I'm going to find the position is just plugging 2 into the, the original equation. The original question, remember, this is position. 
and this is your velocity, okay? So if you want to find where you started, you're going to put in the position formula. And when you plug it in, you get negative 5 twentieths, which is, uh, I know I didn't sub a 5, that's okay. That's negative 1 fourth, so you're starting at negative 1 fourth. Now that we know we started at negative 1 fourth, now we need to ask ourselves, since we now know the position, if we're moving right, we're going towards, or we're moving left, we're moving away from. So the next thing I'm going to do is find what's the velocity at 2. How do I do that? Well, I just plug 2 into the velocity equation, which we'd already solved for. So I just plug it in here. Now I know what you're thinking. This is actually probably going to be a non-calculator question, FRQ question. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why is that? These are such huge numbers. But really, it does not matter. 70 times 2, okay, that's easy, 140. It's not that bad, actually. But all of this, I know that's not that bad either. I, I know I'm kind of hyping it up. But the point being here is, we don't really care about what the number is. That doesn't matter. The only thing we care about is, is it positive or negative? Because that's the only thing that determines if we're moving right or left. And this is going to be a positive number. This is also going to be a positive number. And let's be honest, even if this was negative, if you're going to square it, it's going to be positive anyway. A positive divided by a positive will always be a positive number. So that tells us we're moving right. So we started on the left side, we're moving right, so therefore we are moving towards the origin. All right, I got another video coming out with more context questions, so I'm going to leave it to right here. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.